This is their work room. There's three computers for 106 officers. Now, I've got roughly 130 people working out of this station currently. You guys were right by my holding cell. So, right there? Yeah, okay. yeah, so citizens sit there if I got somebody, a prisoner in that holding cell. I mean, it's just, it's not a safe environment. The chief has a meeting out here. This is my squad room. So at five o'clock, if the chief isn't done with his meeting, I've got third shift officers that have to find a way to sit down with their supervisors and go over what's been going on and what we need to do. I could have anywhere between four and six sergeants working at a time. This is their office. This is the only office they have. Everything that they have is right in here. They tried to keep. There's three chairs and three computers. <laughs> You're also here at the time when my third watch patrol is coming on, and my first watch is coming on. If I have second shift currently working out there. Uh, so I've got a supervisor. I have seven or eight officers out. I'm going to have seven or eight coming in, nine or ten going out. Plus, SCAT team would be coming in on certain times of the week. Community policing officers are working right now. I can't even put my SCAT or my CP officers in this building because I do not have the office space or the facility to be able to have, have a computer, an office area, a place to talk to citizens or work with you know, confidential informants or on complaints. So they're actually off-site, which to supervise, it's not, not the greatest situation. This is the uh, men's locker room. If you notice, real quick, I've got shotgun and uh, cleaning supplies and, and weapons cabinet. All this for scat entry and, and riot gear. I have to put it here, which is kind of in the way, but I have no place else to put it and it has to be secure. So then you come here and I've got electronic lockers for cameras, my, my mobile computer terminals, those computers are in the cars. This is, this is the men's locker room for 90, roughly 90 officers, male officers with supervisors. You're looking at about 110, okay, 115, 110 people. This is it. This is the locker room. These lockers aren't even big enough to hold a full uniform or their equipment. They have to literally carry it back and forth from their personal cars and they have to wear their uniforms in, which is a safety precaution, especially in today's day. And then you have them, you know, parking their cars out there, which you saw a lot. It's not secure. We've had police vehicles vandalized, citizens, our vehicles vandalized. This is one of our lockers. This is just we use for some extra storage and stuff, but this this is the size of them. You can't even put a hole. If something happens to one of their uniforms, we have to have them go home to change. All of our community policing bikes, we had them in here that our officers use when they're on bike patrol. That was in the showers. You couldn't even use the showers for the officers because it was all lined up. This is, this is the conditions that these officers work with right now. Um, this station's probably been in place for close to 30 years. Uh, it was here when I started in 1992. I think it's been here since 87, 88, maybe okay. a little earlier. And this station probably can fit if they got all the lockers and everything done, maybe 40, 50 people, mm -hmm. uh, it would appear. But you would need larger lockers and, and more facilities for the people. But not for 100 and almost 30. Okay. And especially with today's uh, environment, not having a secure facility to be able to take prisoners in without having to bring them near citizens. Because we do have prisoners that we have to bring here to the station to either conduct interviews with or to change and transport to the county jail. So this does affect the officer's morale a little bit. This does affect... Um, you know, the working environment 